Throughout the course, you've been hearing me talk a bit about irrigating sites once the tooth has been removed. Now, I haven't really gone into the specifics of irrigation, but that's what this video is for. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the Monoject 412 syringe. This is what we carry in our office. I assume that most of you have had some exposure to these or have them in your practice. If not, you really wanna make sure that you look at getting some of these because they have some great uses and they're handy items to have around. So the Monoject 412 is basically a syringe that has a really narrow little tip on it. It has a curve to the tip which allows you to get better access to the upper teeth or the lower teeth when you're irrigating. The small tip allows you to get down to the base of a socket if you think how a socket is shaped. The root is getting narrower as it goes to the base. So this will allow you to reach hopefully way down as far as you can into there to make sure that you get all the debris out from the site. Now it also allows you with this small tip to get way down when you open up a flap, you can get way down to the base of it. And uh, that's very important because you think of where all the debris goes, think of gravity, it's pulling it down into the base of the flap. So this in combination with a small tip suction will allow you to fully clean out underneath of a flap that you raise to make sure that you don't run into these delayed post-operative infections that we'll sometimes see. Now a monoject syringe is a 12 cc syringe or 12 milliliter syringe, meaning that's the amount of fluid that you can put in it. Normally you're gonna load this with sterile saline for an extraction procedure. And I would typically only use these if I'm taking out a tooth other than a third molar. So if you're removing any other tooth and it's a simple extraction or surgical extraction, this in my opinion is sufficient for irrigating those sites. Now, the reason I say that is that your flaps are usually not as extensive for those teeth and the amount of debris that you're creating is much less than say an impacted lower third molar. So how much fluid is actually sufficient when we're irrigating a site? And that's a great question. For most cases, like I said, when it's a simple extraction, a surgical extraction that's not a third molar, I would consider using this, which is 12 mils of fluid that's often more than enough. When you get into the third molar region, say a lower impacted third molar, now you gotta kinda of up your fluid a little bit because the debris that you've created and the flap that you've made is more extensive than other areas of the mouth. Now, where I found the answer to this question when I started practicing was actually in Peterson's textbook. It's an oral surgery textbook. And what he suggests is 30 to 50 mils of sterile saline after an extraction in an extraction site, so one single site. So if you think about that, this may not actually be sufficient. You could still use it, but it means that you're gonna be using many of them, uh, at least three for each site, which is kind of wasteful. Um, you can obviously reload it, but then of course you're, you're ruining a big thing of sterile saline. So it might be better to invest in some larger syringes that have that capacity, right? So about 50 mil syringe or 80 mil syringe, whatever you can find that will allow you to then irrigate the site fully without reloading syringes or having multiples prepared ahead of time. Now, that amount of fluid is a copious amount. So they always say that the solution to pollution is dilution. That's a saying that I've heard many times throughout dentistry. And it's just saying that you can spray this in there into the site clear out as much of that junk as you can to get that flap healing up nicely with minimal complications. When you're irrigating after an extraction, you should do it immediately. Now, I say immediately because the more you mess around after an extraction, the less time you're gonna have for the bleeding to be taking place. So when you remove the tooth, have this thing ready to go, pick it up off your tray, spray it into the socket, get everything kind of nice and clean in there with the suction, get the suction out of there and allow the socket then to fill up with blood one more time. Now, that's a critical mistake that sometimes will be made. You actually rinse the clot out before the patient even leaves the office. Now, that's not a recipe for good healing, right? And we're aware of that. So we're actually iatrogenically causing some of these problems post-operatively if we're waiting too long to irrigate and you're not getting that bleeding after to get a nice clot formed. Now, the other thing I mentioned just briefly there is that you have to make sure that your assistants aren't in the habit of this too. Like sometimes they'll take the tooth out, you irrigate it, things look good, and then the assistant's kind of cleaning up around the mouth a bit. Maybe there's some bleeding that got into other areas of the mouth, wiping it with a gauze, rinsing out a bit, and then they go back and they stick that suction down into the socket and out comes that clot, right? Same thing. So make sure to direct them 
to kind of stay out of there. Once you do your initial irrigation, they clean up around there real quick with the suction and then don't re-enter that socket. Just leave it to get the clot forming. You're gonna get better results with healing, fewer post-operative complications. So what happens if we do everything right and then our patient comes back to our office and they've developed a dry socket? Well, again, that's where you're gonna be happy to have these monoject syringes around because you can fill them up with a saline to then flush out that site and get some of the food debris and particles that may be sitting in that socket out of there, clean it up a bit, and then put your favorite dressing within that socket. Now, myself, again, I've got a whole video on this, but just to recap it again here, I use a chlorhexidine peroxide mix in there. It's not recommended in the literature, so if you look that up in the literature, it's gonna tell you that that has a very negative effect on a cellular level. Uh, as far as healing and regeneration of tissue. On the macro scale, I can't say I've really noticed any difference. So that's why I continue to do it. And I find that the peroxide actually bubbles up nice, which helps to carry some of the debris uh, and food out from the socket and continues even after you've irrigated, which is nice. So I do that and I dilute the peroxide a bit with chlorhexidine. Again, not a recommended practice, but something that I do. The recommendation usually is just a saline in there which again will do a fine job, but I find it doesn't always get everything out quite as easily. You're gonna need more of it and multiple flushes typically to get the site clean.